Hi there and welcome to another ATP product review. Now today I'm going to be talking about a very cool little device called the MyOps Smart Trigger. Um, that's the box for it and you can see I've got it already fitted on the camera here. Now before I start I'll just tell you that I was actually sent this for review but if you know me and you've been on the site for a while you'll know that I don't review anything that I wouldn't buy myself, wouldn't use myself or I don't think that my uh, readers would actually like. So if it's being reviewed it means I think it's pretty cool and I think this is pretty cool. Now what this is, is a basically it's a remote trigger for your camera but it, it triggers the camera via various means. Uh, via various means. I'll run through three or four of them but it does have about 11 different modes but the, the main ones I think you're going to like. Now it's pretty simple to use, if I just take it off here for a second. Now you can actually see I've got it fixed onto a pocket wizard here with the flash gun, I'll come to that in a second. But it's really easy to set up. What you get in the kit when you buy it, you get the trigger itself, you get a cable that will connect to your camera, but you do have to let them know which camera you've got so they send you the right cable. And you get a, a flash sync cable and you get the USB cable for charging and uh, doing various updates on the firmware and stuff. Pretty easy to do, you plug it into the uh, socket on the front, the remote socket on the front, put it onto your hot shoe or the hot shoe of the uh, pocket wizard like I've done here. Um, bear in mind it hasn't got any tightening uh, mechanism so it just literally slots on and that's it. So be aware it doesn't, uh, make sure it doesn't fall off. Pretty simple to use, um, you've got, I'm going to run like I say through three or four of the basic uh, features but you can either operate it directly from the trigger itself here on top of the camera or you can use their free app which I'll come to in a second. Now when you switch it on the first one you come to is lightning so if you want to take photos of lightning at night and you don't really want to stand around for hours and try to press the button as soon as the lightning goes off that kind of thing then this is brilliant. You set the camera up on a tripod, set it to lightning mode, press the right hand button to activate it and you can change the sensitivity. So it goes from one to 99. I'd, I'd always leave it on one of the highest ones for lightning, but bear in mind if a car, example, headlights go into there, it's gonna set the camera off. So set the camera up appropriately, do a couple of test shots before you actually set this up, uh, and make sure you've got the exposure right, something like five seconds at night uh, may be pretty good. Set the ISO and aperture accordingly, um, and then pretty much you're ready to go, but always set the camera to manual focus and manual settings. The reason why you do manual focus is that when it triggers the camera you don't want it to be hunting for focus or anything like that. Set it all to manual, do a couple of test shots, put it on uh, lightning and then literally just press the right hand button again and it is now activated. So just to show you how that works I'll use the flash gun to mimic lightning, uh, put the camera on as well that would help and then just fire it into the camera and you can see it just fires it off. So if you've got a long exposure, then obviously this is going to work really well because you may get a, a pre-lightning pre flash and then the main bolt come out. So um, like I said, always leave maybe a five second. You can actually set it up to do a 30 second exposure. So you make sure you maybe get two or three bolts of lightning. But again, it's brilliant. You can just set it up, let it go and play with it to get the right settings to do with the sensitivity, camera settings and all that kind of thing. Okay, so that's the lightning one. Then if we come out of there and go back to the menu, then the next one is sound. Quite like this one, so I've set it on sound and the parameters here are sensitivity, delay and lock. Now again the sensitivity depending on how loud the sound is. If you're in a concert you don't need it that loud, um, but then it's just going to fire off all the time so you wouldn't necessarily use it there. But let's say you wanted something like a door opening or closing, you could set the sensitivity accordingly, do a couple of test shots, make sure you got it right. If it's too sensitive, any sound will set it off, so you want it appropriate to whatever you're shooting. Uh, so I've got it set up here, then you've got the delay. Now the delay means the camera will trigger a short delay after the sound. So if, you're, if you've got an air rifle over there, you're shooting a bulb here, you don't want the camera to trigger with the noise of the gun going off. You want a very small delay, so the camera, uh, sorry, the gun fires in a few milliseconds you set a short delay and then the camera will fire as the pellet hits the bulb. So you can set the delay accordingly. Again, you do a couple of test shots. Great for things like stock photography if you want those kind of cool shots. Um, so you basically set the sensitivity, set the delay, you can lock it on or off and then set it running and then if I clap, it just takes photos. So that will go off with any sound that you're actually looking to do. But bear in mind, again, it will go off with any sound, not just the sound of something you're aiming at. Okay, but really good feature. And the next one I'm going to show you is, I think the coolest one, let's come out of there. 
is laser. Now, this kit doesn't come with a laser, you have to buy your own. I bought this from Amazon a few years ago for about £10, I think, and it's the green laser, which I think is pretty cool. It's very powerful, um, it'll go for miles. Um, batteries last pretty well, I use um, rechargeable ones in here. Um, but this hasn't got a clamp, you have to actually hold it down. So I'd recommend getting a clamp with it, so that will then keep the laser on so you can attach it to a tripod. And what you need to do is set this up on a tripod and fire it, aim it directly into the front sensor of the Myops trigger. So I've got this set on lightning at the moment, on a laser at the moment, set it running. Again, you've got a threshold um, because when the laser breaks, that's when it takes the photos. So you can play about the threshold. I've got this on 99 at the moment. There is a delay again. So if you're set in front of a owl coming out of the window, for example, you and you've set the camera up slightly over to the right so you want it to break and then take the photo then you can set a short delay if it's immediacy you want then no delay at all and then you've got how many frames you want to take so you may want to take one two three or four frames um, and basically the frame rate on this matches that of your camera the highest rate so if this does seven frames a second i can set this up to seven frames and it'll burst seven shots out in one second as the laser gets broken i'll just quickly show you how it works so I've got all those set up, I press it again to activate. It's now in laser mode, so if I push that, put that into the front sensor and then break it, you can hear it firing. Okay, missed it there. Okay, so that's brilliant, really, really good. So you can actually set this up, uh, like I say, the, one of the best examples is in front of a, a window in a barn where an owl's gonna come flying out at night you don't want to sit there all night waiting for it. You could set the laser up into this and then fire away. But bear in mind that this is attached to the camera. So you can't really have this right up at the window with this and a laser going into it. So what you do in that case is you can buy a, uh, a mobile dongle, as it's called, which will allow you to keep this off the camera. And you would take this out and you would use the dongle to actually attach it to your phone and via the app. So you could have the camera from maybe 30, 40 meters away with a long lens, um, and then this and the laser would be going across the window. So when the laser gets broken, the Bluetooth signal hits your phone and it takes the photo and it's all very instantaneous. So the possibilities with that with, are endless, especially with things like wildlife. So I love that feature. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, you can set it up for anything, traffic coming past. One example I had was, I'll put it in, the, in my review, is if you want a two camera um, shoot without paying the addition, additional cost of an extra person, you can set one camera up with a laser going across the finishing line of a race and that camera will just take shot after shot after shot every time the laser is broken as people come across the line. You could stand there with a second camera doing a slightly different angle and voila, you've got a two person shoot without the cost of a second person. Okay, so there's loads and loads of things to do with that. So love the lightning one, that's really cool. Uh, let's put it back on. The next one, turn off laser mode. It's got a HDR mode, which is pretty good. Um, HDR is pretty simple to do these days. You just take a series of photos. Uh, this will do three, five or seven frames um, with differing exposures. Then you still have to put the, the photos into something like Photoshop to actually get that HDR image. Um, it's not a magic bullet. It does set it up nicely for you. It does allow you to take those photos. Most DSLRs these days do have that feature or function, so, and it's fairly easy to do manually, but this just helps you to do it really quickly. Uh, another mode on here is time-lapse. Again, a lot of modern DSLRs have a time-lapse feature in them nowadays, uh, like the 5D Mark IV here, Canon. But if you've got the 5D Mark II, that doesn't, so you can use this, and when you open this up, you get the interval, the exposure, and how many photos you want to take. So let's say you're doing a, a night time-lapse of star trails moving across the sky, you may be set an interval of 40 seconds um, and you have to have an exposure obviously less than that. Uh, you can't set an interval of 40 seconds and have a 50 second exposure. So let's say you want a 30 second exposure with a 40 second interval, set that up and then you have to work out how many photos you want for the finished uh, video if you like. So a 10 second video at 25 frames a second, that's 250 photos, okay? So you work that out, set it all up on here, leave it running and Bob's your uncle, you've got that done. Okay, so it's, again, it's a handy little feature to have. Now, what it's also got in here, if I set this back up again, you've got various other features in there, but I'm not gonna go through them all. Um, I'm gonna put, put that back in. By the way, on the side here, you've got all the 
entries for camera attachment, the USB attachment for firmware upgrades and things. You've got the smart remote um, thing there and the, the flash as well. You get a flash sync cable with it so you can operate your flash guns with it. Going on that, I'll, before I come to the app, I've got the pocket wizard on here. So let's go back to the example of a barn owl coming through a window. You've got the, the trigger set up one side of the window, the laser the other side, and you've got your camera set up from a distance with a long lens, dying to get the shot, but it's quite dark obviously. So obviously you need some flash gun set up. Now I've got the Pocket Wizard TTL1 on here. I'm gonna turn that on. And I've got the uh, TT5 or the, yeah, the TT5 Flex here. I'm gonna switch that on and turn the flash gun on. So this is completely independent. So you could have one, two, three, four or five of these um, pointing at the barn. So when the owl comes out and the laser gets broken, it takes the photo and then it's done. So let's set this to sound. Um, I can't, I'm not gonna set the laser up, put it on sound, just set it running, and then hopefully this will work. Let's do a test flash. So now if I clap and take a photo, it should set the flash off as well. Click, did that go off? I'm not sure if the flash is going off. Yeah, hopefully you'll see that. I can't see it on the screen if it's going off. It's doing it, yes, I think it is. One, two, three, four, five. I'm pretty sure that's going off. <laughs> Let me do it in my face. Ugh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so you can set up as many pocket wizards with flash guns as you like over the subject. It'll all run automatically from here. So you can again walk away or sit in a hide somewhere out of the smell range if you like. Um, and get as many shots as you want. So again, it's a pretty cool system. So let's turn all the flash guns off, all the bits and pieces, and then sound mode is running, so cancel that. By the way, the batteries last for ages. I've been testing this for a long time and it's still on full. It's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so to use your phone as a remote for the MyOps Smart when it's attached to your camera, you simply download the MyOps Smart app from either the Play Store on Android or from the, uh, the store on your iOS device. Uh, and then you make sure that you've got your location activated and turned on and also your Bluetooth turned on. Once you've done those, you simply start the app and it will search for your MyOps Smart and it's found it just there in the circle. So I tap that, it goes into the middle and it's now connected. So in its simplest form, I can go just to cable release, comes up the big red screen, tap here to take a photo and I can just do that. Every time I tap the photo, tap the screen, it takes a photo, so it's good. If you have got this set up with a wide angle lens, flash guns and everything, and some wildlife walks in front, you're miles away from the distance, you just take a photo when it's there, okay? Then you've got a press and hold one, so for this you have to be in manual or bulb, I think it is, let's go to bulb. And so this is for long exposure, so I press, and it's opened the shutter, and it's got a timer at the top, three, four, five seconds, let go, and it will close the shutter. So it's good for long exposure, bulb shots, okay? The other one is press and lock. So I can, that will now open the shutter. I don't have to hold it, so I can walk away and leave it going for five minutes. Again, the time is running at the top, that's six seconds, seven seconds, tap it again to stop. So that's good if you don't wanna sit there with your hand on the phone, if it's gonna be a relatively long exposure. Next one, you've got a timed release. Now, what this, I thought this meant a countdown timer to take the photo, but what it means is you simply set in how many seconds you want the photo to be for. So I'll set this for three seconds, press start, one, two, three, and it's done. So you can set your own parameters on there rather than doing it through the camera. So we'll stop that. Um, then on here, you've got the firmware update button as well. You've got DIY, HDR. You can set everything that you can do on here from the app. So let's go to sound. I go to sound on there. I can set the sensitivity, delay, and the lock. Um, let's just start that running. It's now running. Okay, let's stop that. So you can do anything you want to, anything you can do on here, you can do on the app, but on the app, you've got extra things, like I say, you can use your phone as an actual remote control. So overall, it's a really cool system. Um, I haven't gone into everything that it does, but with the sound activation, the laser, um, and the lightning modes, things like that. It's just brilliant. There's so much to this. And I think it's around $219 at the moment, uh, possibly about 200 pounds on, on Amazon and things. Have a look at the links below, go to the site, have a look, see what they've got on there. 
um, but I would recommend getting one of these because it's so good, so much fun, so many things you can do with it, but also try and get the, the dongle for the smartphone so you can set up laser signals uh, distance away from the actual camera. But yeah, I think it's brilliant, highly recommended, and I know I'll be using it for lots of stuff in the future, especially for stock where I can't get the shots without it.